Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, today I will continue talking about um, lines and planes and about their parallelism. Um, we have already defined all the different elements we will be dealing with in solid geometry and now we are going through different properties, characteristics and theorems, which is very important. Actually, that's my kind of uh, favorite part of the course when I'm trying to prove the theorems, solve the problems, because that's exactly what is required from um, the young student's mind to be developing, right? So that's the purpose of the whole course, to, to teach you to, to think logically, analytically, create, creatively, etc. And that's why I would actually recommend you to try to prove all these theorems which uh, I'm going to present today just by yourself. Go to the unizor.com where this lecture is presented and in the notes you have all the theorems and the proofs as well. So you can just look at the proofs, um, think about how you would prove it yourself, then listen to the lecture, then try it again so you will actually be comfortable with the logic of this. Now, logic is very important here because we are very close to the axioms. We, are not, we don't really have a, a, a big set of theorems which we can base upon. <clears throat> there are actually practically none. We just have a couple of uh, theorems and a couple of axioms which we have already passed through, which I will repeat actually. Um, so, it's very interesting how you build the logic in such a way that you are based you, you base your logical conclusions only on those axioms and the theorems which you have already proven before. So that's why you have the logical um, stepping, stepping forward. Okay, so today we're talking about parallelism between lines and planes. And let me just very briefly remind you uh, the axiom, the, the, the main axioms. I mean, there are many axioms. Um, Hilbert actually was uh, the guy who to, to put uh, a set of like 20 something axioms uh, into geometry uh, which definitely encompass Euclid's uh, postulates. Um, so let me just remind you. Okay, axiom number one. If uh, two points belong to a plane then the line which connects these two points also belongs to the plane. That's an axiom and it seems to be quite obvious. Now the second one is if a point belongs to the intersection between two planes then there is a whole line, uh, or a straight line obviously, where these planes intersect and obviously this line contains the point. Uh, and the third axiom is if you have three points in space which are not lying on the same uh, line there is one and only one plane which goes through them again an obvious thing. Now as a very brief consequence of this we have proven a couple of theorems and one of them which is probably more important for this particular lecture is that um, if you have a, a, a straight line and the point outside there is only one plane which there is a, one and only one plane which goes through the line and the point. So the line and the point outside of it define the plane. So these are axioms and, uh, and the trivial consequence which um, uh, I will be using right now. Um, so let me just go straight to the definition. Now the previous lecture was about the parallelism of two lines. And let me just remind you that two lines are parallel in the three-dimensional space if they, well obviously number one do not have common points, but number two they should be in the same plane. Now what about the line and the plane? Well, the parallelism between the line and the plane is even simpler. Just no common points. That's it. As long as there is no... the intersection between the line and the plane is empty, these are parallel to each other. So, let me just write it down. If there is a line A and there is a plane gamma and their intersection is empty, Therefore, A is parallel to plane gamma by definition, right? So this is a definition. This is the definition of, of the parallelism. 
Now I will I, I will be using different um, uh, symbols as, as I'm going through and primarily my lowercase legend letters will be lines uppercase legend letters will be points and the Greek letters will be planes lowercase Greek letters so I'll try to adhere to the standard throughout the course now we are now we have five different theorems which we would like to group one after another and that's what I'm going to do and I hope I will be able to do it okay theorem number one uh, okay if you have a plane let's call it gamma you have a line B on the plane and line A outside of the plane and I know that A parallel B so these two lines so one of these two lines is inside the plane another is outside so the theorem states that if this is a situation when line outside is parallel to the line inside then it's a sufficient condition for this line A to be parallel entire uh, entire plane okay so how can we prove it well let's just think about it what is a definition of of the parallel um, lines the parallel lines are, are, are those lines um, which number one line the same plane and number two do not have common points right now if I'm stating that these two lines are parallel it means there is some kind of a plane they both belong to and in that plane they do not have any common points right all right okay so if you assume that line A intersects somewhere um, um, the plane gamma so let's say that there is some kind of intersection now at the same time line A completely belongs to some kind of a plane well let's call it delta um, with line B since they are parallel so since line A completely belongs to to, to, to beta this point which is a continuation of line A also belongs to uh, plane uh, beta uh, sorry, sorry delta so these two lines within the plane uh, delta are supposed to be parallel which means it cannot actually happen any intersection be be between between these two lines but if however I assume that line A somewhere intersects gamma it's in it's inevitably means that these two lines are intersecting because these two lines belong to the delta so everything happens within this plane delta and and that contradicts basically the, the parallelism of of the lines a and b that they are not actually uh, intersecting to each other so it looks like any continuation of uh, line a it cannot hit um, the plane uh, uh, gamma because these two are inevitably will be intersecting within this plane delta because this line is completely belongs to the delta and this line completely belongs to the delta that's why they're intersecting within the plane delta and that contradicts the two-dimensional um, parallelism this is basically the the fifth postulate of Euclid that the parallel lines are not actually intersecting all right so that basically proves that this is impossible the intersection between line A and the plane gamma is impossible which means that they are parallel A and gamma okay 
That's the first theorem. Actually, all of these theorems are relatively easy. Um, it's like basically one logical step from, from something which we have already learned to this particular theorem. Theorem number two. Okay, now let's assume that we have a plane, gamma, again, and we have a line, A, which is parallel. Now, um, now we draw a plane which is crossing So, this plane delta is containing the line A and crossing the, uh, the plane gamma. So, the theorem states that intersection between uh, gamma and delta, which is this line, let's call it B, is parallel to the A. In some way, it's a, it's, it's a reverse theorem to the previous one. So in this case, we, um, we know that the line A is parallel to gamma, to the plane gamma, and it intersects, um, the plane delta is, uh, contains the line A and intersects uh, plane gamma. So the intersection will be parallel to this. Okay. How can we prove it? Well, this is the easiest uh, of all these theorems. Now, the parallelism between this and this means that these two lines are supposed to uh, be in the same plane, but they are in the same plane by construction of delta, right? Since B is uh, an intersection between gamma and delta, it obviously belongs to delta. So A and B both belong to delta. So they do belong to the same plane. Now, the second condition is that they should not really intersect these two lines if we want them to be parallel in three-dimensional space. Well, they cannot intersect because B completely is part of the gamma. So if A and B are intersecting, it means A and gamma are intersecting. So somewhere, if there is some kind of a point where they intersect, this point belongs to gamma because the B belongs to gamma. So and that contradicts the parallelism between A and gamma, which means that these two lines, A and B, must be parallel. One plane they belong to and no intersection. Very simple. Next. Next is Okay, if you have a line in space and some kind of point outside it, outside of it. Question is, how many lines parallel to A you can draw through A? Well, the obvious an an answer is one. Now we have to prove it, so that's the theorem. So we have to prove that through a point lying outside of a line A in three-dimensional space, you can construct only one, one and only one line parallel to, um, to line A. Well, again, let's assume that there is another one. So we have two lines, both are going through this point A, and both are parallel to uh, line A. Okay, how can we prove that this, that B and C is actually one and the same line? Well, let's just think about it. Well, since um, A and B are parallel, we obviously can construct a plane which contains both of them, 
and in that plane they do not have any common points. All right, so A is parallel to B. All right, now what? Um, well, now let's try to have another plane which connects A and C, through A and C. So we have another plane and again, it's possible because A and C supposedly are parallel, right? Okay, now, so what do we have now? What do we have now? Um, so, here's an interesting point. Let's call the first gamma and delta. Okay, so let's consider the plane delta, which is the plane which connects A and C. Now, B is parallel to this plane delta because B is parallel to one line, which is A, which belongs to delta. And that's our first theorem, right? So, as, uh, 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 according to the first theorem, B is parallel to delta. On the other hand, B has a common point with C and therefore with delta. So, it looks like B should be parallel to delta, but at the same time, it has a common point. Well, that's, that's a contradiction, because the parallel line to a plane cannot have any common points. So that's why B and C must be one and the same line. It cannot be two different lines. Well, that's it. So again, we consider delta. And since B is parallel to A, B is parallel to entire delta and it cannot have a common point all right that's it short and sweet next mm -hmm. okay if you have two different planes one plane and another plane. Well, let me just continue it from this point. That would be easier. All right. So, two planes. And I know that the line A is parallel to both mu and nu. So, if line A is parallel to two intersecting plane uh, uh, intersecting pla uh, planes then the theorem states that it's supposed to be parallel to their intersection so if a parallel to the uh, plane mu and a parallel to plane nu therefore it's supposed to be parallel to their intersection. So B is intersection between new and new. Okay. Let's try to prove that. Well, again, what does it mean to be parallel between two lines? It means uh, it's supposed to be in one plane, both supposed to be in the same plane, and no intersection. Well. No intersection is obvious in this case, because if A intersects B, it means it intersects with both of these planes, which is impossible since it's parallel to them. So no intersection is fine. So the question is whether it belongs to the same um, uh, plane. All right, what we will do is the following. Let's just take one particular point 
on the B and draw a plane uh, based on the line and the point which is one and only plane possible which we were proving in some other theorem so this is our plane which is um, which is uh, constructed from A, line A and point B well now this plane um, let's call it I don't know, gamma so this plane gamma intersects with both mu and let's call this line of intersection M now M is a line in mu which goes through P and what's also important since A parallel to uh, plane mu this intersection should be parallel to the A that's the second theorem right which we have proven before now in, uh, analogously this plane gamma if I intersect it with with this plane mu it will be some kind of line N and also sorry parallel to A so what do we have? we have both M and N parallel to A and both M and N both contain point P now the theorem number 3 says that from this point outside of A we can draw only one line which is parallel to the given line so from the point P we can have only one line which is parallel to A in space which means that M and N are one and the same line so it's one and the same line now M belongs to mu n which is the same line belongs to nu so one and the same line belongs to both mu and nu therefore m or n whatever you want to call it belongs to their intersection and intersection between two lines and it, 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 between two planes is one and only line b so m is b well same thing as n so that's the that's the end of the proof that B and M and N are all one and the same line which is parallel to A and that's what we needed to be proven okay that's it and uh, the last theorem the fifth one for today is the following uh, uh -huh. If you have two lines parallel to one and the same and the same line, they are parallel to each other something quite obvious if two different lines are parallel to the third one they must be parallel to themselves in two-dimensional we know about this theorem now about the three-dimensional thing all right we have to prove um, okay so let's just think first of all M and N cannot have common points because if they do if they intersect somewhere in space it would look like from the point P we have drawn two different lines parallel uh, to the same line A and we have already proven it in uh, theorem number which one? 3 right? yes that's the theorem number 3 
which 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 we have proven that this is impossible there is only one line parallel to another which you can draw from one particular point so no common points between m, m, m and m so what we have to uh, uh, prove is only that they belong to the same plane all right okay so let's just try to prove that they belong to the same plane let's choose the point let's say p on line n and uh, we will draw the following planes uh, this plane M and A are parallel by, by, by the condition of the theorem, which means we can draw the plane it belongs to, let's call it mu, and they do not intersect. N and A are also parallel, so we can draw a plane N, uh, nu, and uh, A is the intersection between mu and nu, obviously, because A belongs to both of them. Now we will draw the third plane between the line M and one particular point on the line M, which I call P, right? Um, okay, so it's something like this. Now, I do not know that the whole line N actually um, is part of this plane, let's call it gamma, let's say. I do not know that. That's what I have to prove. If I know that n belongs to this plane gamma, then it means that m and n are in the same plane, and that's what the parallelism means, because they don't have common points. All I know is that only one point, p, of n belongs to this plane. But now let's just think about it. m is parallel to a, and therefore m is parallel to nu the entire plane nu which contains a and m is parallel to a therefore m is parallel to entire plane right that's the that's the first theorem we have proven okay now now let's use the second theorem since m line m is parallel to plane nu it means that intersection between gamma and nu is parallel to m so we have a plane which is nu and we have intersected with gamma and m is parallel to the plane the, the, the second theorem says that in this case the intersection would be parallel to the M. So this intersection is parallel to M. Now, let me ask you, can this intersection be anything but, but the, but, but the uh, line N? Well, if you assume that, if you assume that there is some other line instead of N, N prime, then it looks like N prime and N both are going through the same point P parallel to M which again we have proven before the third theorem that this is impossible from one point we can draw only one line parallel to another line so basically the intersection between uh, plane gamma and plane nu is this line N which means that N and M why both in the same plane gamma and that's a sufficient condition for them being parallel because there is no common points all right so basically as you saw it just takes one or two logical steps from the beginning from the axioms and one of these theorems to to, to prove another one but it's very important to make them right because it's very easy to make some kind of a logical loop and start proving A from B and then B from A 
and then that's basically a distortion of the entire uh, logical construction which we're trying to build so try to be very careful with this and I definitely urge you to go through the notes for this lecture again and follow the proof try it yourself as well it's very important that from the very beginning when everything is really simple and requires only one or two logical steps that you do it yourself so ultimately I would like you to be able to basically like stand like I'm standing here and explain it to somebody else based on certain axioms and certain um, uh, very uh, uh, primitive theorems to make some logical steps to prove a little bit more complicated theorems. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.